Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible. Turn to Ezekiel chapter 30. This is a continuation of the Ezekiel series. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, and John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Ezekiel 30, verse 1. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Howl ye! Woe worth the day! For the day is near, even the day of the Lord is near. A cloudy day, it shall be the time of the heathen. Now I've got a series of videos on the day of the Lord. And let you know a little secret. Jesus Christ is Lord. And there's a whole bunch of people say, well, the day of the Lord and the day of Christ is two different things. It's not the same. Basically, pre-trib rapture crowd is basically saying, no, they're basically denying that Christ is Lord. Essentially, when you think about it. So, because they want you to think the day of the Lord is the second coming when destruction happens upon the wicked. But the day of Christ is the pre-trib rapture. We're going to fly away out of here. <laughs> I don't think so. I think Jesus Christ is Lord and the day of Christ and the day of the Lord is the same event. Because Jesus Christ is Lord. There's no pre-trib rapture. There's the pre-trib rupture that's going to happen. Yeah. And uh, all those church people that believe this garbage because they trusted their pastor, they're paid for, paid off, paid for pastor. Well, they're going to get what they deserve. One thing I got to say, uh, Kent Hoven, really good with the um, evolution stuff even though there's a lot of things I disagree with him with. He thinks every race descended from Adam. I don't think so. I mean, you know, did Adam and Eve really uh, have one black baby and a white baby and a yellow baby and a green baby and a polka dotted purple baby? Uh, you know, really? You know? I mean, you know, you might have a dog... Uh, one's a Great Dane and the other's a Chihuahua, but they're both dogs. But I'm sorry, I just don't think, um, I don't know. He doesn't, uh, I, I don't believe he teaches the uh, what happened in Genesis 6 with the fallen angels. Uh, he's one of those that thinks everybody can be saved. I don't. I mean, Jesus called Judas Iscariot a devil. I mean, he Jesus knew what, you know, Judas didn't become a devil. Jesus, Judas was born a devil. That's just the way it is. But that's why they want you to think that everybody can be saved. Because then we don't have enemies. We just have potential Sheep, you know, all they got to do is believe in Jesus and they're saved. And now they're part of the, the flock. But that's not what the Bible teaches in Genesis and Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers, Deuteronomy. No, God told Israel to go into the land and kill everything that breathed. But Chaplain Bob, that was that evil, cruel Old Testament God. We don't have that anymore. Now we got Jesus. He loves everybody. Uh, whatever. You know. Let's look at this carefully. 
Ezekiel 30, verse 3. For the day is near, even the day of the Lord is near. A cloudy day. It shall be the time of the heathen. Now, if you're interested, I've got a playlist on Day of the Lord. Where I contrast Day of Christ, Day of the Lord. Verse 4, listen to this carefully for all those that think everybody can be saved. And the sword, war, right? And the sword shall come upon Egypt, and great pain shall be in Ethiopia. Now, Egypt and Ethiopia, Libya, those were where the children of Ham went. And we all know ham's not kosher. That's a joke. Um, I'm just wondering, who named pork ham? Who named it that? Well, I didn't do it. I mean, it was called ham before, you know, I had ever eaten any. But, uh, you know, just because they live in an area that is now predominantly... Uh, populated by pre-Sub-Saharan Africans of a dark color doesn't mean that ham was originally black. I mean, you go to uh, what they now call Zimbabwe, back when it was called Rhodesia, there was a lot of white farmers. Well, they killed most of them, or they fled, and now Zimbabwe is like 99% black. Didn't used to be like that. They used to export food, believe it or not. Now they have starvation. And matter of fact, the I think his name was Mugabe, or I forget. But he was crying that uh, they didn't have any food. Well, duh. What do you think happens when you kill your farmers, dumbass? Yeah, I know. Well, uh, ass is a Bible word, by the way. And dumbass is another uh, Bible phrase. The dumbass speaking with man's voice. Yeah. I'm not trying to be crude, but, you know, they deserve to starve. Instead, what does the West do? Uh, our people that are in charge, the enemies, they send them food and feed them. I personally, I would have let them all starve. Oh, that's cruel, Chaplain Bob. Well, you know, kill your farmers, go hungry. I don't care. I really don't. Matter of fact, uh, Zimbabwe, Rhodesia, whatever, uh, was begging their farmers to come back. Well, until they get resurrected from the grave, it's kind of hard for them to come back, you know. Well, a few of them survived, but, uh, but the point is, South Africa used to be mostly white. Now it's the opposite. It's not anymore. And they're doing to South Africa what they're doing to what they did to Rhodesia, Zimbabwe. And I'm sure they'll be crying that they don't have any food either. But just because modern day Ethiopia is predominantly black doesn't mean that it was back in the days of Ezekiel. I suspect that Ham and all those descendants intermarried with the Canaanites. But the Bible doesn't tell you who Ham's mother was, doesn't tell you who Ham's wife was. I suspect that uh, they could have been Canaanites. I don't know. All I know is in verse 4 of Ezekiel 30, they... Uh, and verse 5 doesn't speak very nice about them. Verse 4, And the sword shall come upon Egypt, and great pain shall be in Ethiopia, when the slain shall fall in Egypt, and they shall take away her multitude, and her foundations shall be broken down. Doesn't sound like God likes Ethiopia, or uh Egypt, does it? Listen to this, verse 5. Ethiopia and Libya and Lydia and all the mingled people 
What does mingled means? It means mixed. You ever gone to a party, you know, and somebody says, oh, hey, go mingle with, you know, everybody. It means go mix with the crowd. You know, don't sit in the corner because you don't know anybody. That's what mingled means. It means mixed. Ethiopia and Libya and Lydia and all the mingled people. Mingled with what? Probably the Canaanites. And Chub and the men of the land that is in league shall fall with them by the sword. It doesn't sound like God likes these people, does it? No. Verse 6. Thus saith the Lord, They also that uphold Egypt shall fall, and the pride of her power shall come down. From the tower of Syene shall they fall in it by the sword, saith the Lord God. And they shall be desolate in the midst of the countries that are desolate, and her cities shall be in the midst of the cities that are wasted. And no, they're not stoned out of their minds. Verse 8. That's a high school saying, by the way. Yeah, I'm, I'm old. Uh, what was that movie, Fast Times at Richmond High? Uh, uh, I don't know. Penn, what was it? Sean Penn or whatever. Oh, well, man, I'm wasted. Or something like that. I don't remember. I never watched much movies, even back in the day. Verse 8. And they shall know that I am the Lord when I have set a fire in Egypt, and when all her helpers shall be destroyed. In that day shall messengers go forth from me in ships to make the careless Ethiopians afraid and great pain shall come upon them as in the day of Egypt for lo it cometh thus saith the Lord God I will also make the multitude of Egypt to cease by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon now, what's interesting is, when you read Daniel chapter 4, guess who wrote it? Nebuchadnezzar. I suspect he, I suspect he came to the Lord. I, I really do. I mean, how many people do you know that wrote a, a chapter in a book in the Bible and were not saved? I mean, and, and the Lord gave him a kingdom. Verse 11, so speaking of Nebuchadnezzar, he and his people with him, the terrible of the nations, shall be brought to destroy the land. What land? Egypt. And they shall draw their swords against Egypt and fill the land with the slain. And I will make the rivers dry and sell the land into the hand of the wicked. And I will make the land waste and all that is therein by the hand of strangers, I, the Lord, have spoken it. See, Egypt had all those strange gods. And if you want to honor the fallen angels, which I suspect they are, I think when I finish the uh, Ezekiel series, I'll do a, something on Egypt. Do you know that there are pyramids all over the world? And a lot of them have the top of the pyramids are flat. I think they were religious centers, you know, doing sacrifice. There's things down in Mexico and Central and South America where they built uh, pyramid type things. I forget it's the Mayans, the Aztecs, the Incas, I forget which is which. But uh, they found all kinds of 
mass graves, human sacrifice. And they could tell they were murdered because, you know, when you when they find the bones and uh the um ribs were spread apart so they could cut the heart out. And of course they'll say, Oh, that's not true. That was those Spanish the Spaniards lying about human sacrifice, you know, cutting their hearts out and eating them. You know, but uh hey, they got knife marks on the ribs on skeletons, so maybe the Spaniards were telling the truth, you know. Of course, the Spaniards came to the New World in search of gold and riches. They didn't come to the New World looking for a place to get away from religious persecution. They were tied in with the Catholic Church, which was the one doing the religious persecution. Of course, they were infiltrated long ago by the you-know-whos, but, uh, you know, who uh, who wanted them, these, uh, these pyramids built? Who wanted them built? Probably the fallen angels, so that they could worship the fallen angels. That's my guess. I don't see any other way. I don't see in the Bible where anybody was told to build a pyramid. Look on the back of the dollar bill what do you see a pyramid with the all-seeing eye with a six-pointed star yes indeed what does that tell you people verse 13 thus saith the lord god i will also destroy the idols and i will cause their images to cease out of nof nof and there shall be no more a prince of the land of Egypt. And I will put a fear in the land of Egypt. And I will make Pathros desolate. And will set a fire in Zoan. And will execute judgments in No. I think that was my uh, oldest daughter's first word. No. Yeah. She thought her name was No. Jessica, no! Get away from that! And then she learned how to say, No! Jessica, give me that back. No! And then her second word was mine. And then she, she combinations, you know, she'd steal her sister's toy and go, No, mine! Yeah. Ah, the joys of parenthood. What can I tell you? Yeah, now they don't want to talk to me. So, I'm the religious nut. Oh, well. What can I tell you? Of course, I was a terrible husband to their mom. But that's the way it goes, I guess. And I will cut off the multitude of no... Verse 16, and I will set fire in Egypt. Sin, sin shall have great pain. I'm not talking to know if they're talking about wickedness or a place called sin. And no shall be rent asunder, and no shall have distresses daily. The young men of Avon and of Pibseth shall fall by the sword, and these cities shall go into captivity. At Tiaphenes, ah oh boy, also the day shall be darkened, when I shall break there the yokes of Egypt, and the pomp of her strength shall cease in her. As for her, a cloud shall cover her, and her daughters shall go into captivity. Thus will I execute judgments in Egypt, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 20. And it came to pass, in the eleventh year, in the first month, in the seventh day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have broken the arm of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, now, this is a figure of speech. 
I mean, it's like, you know, his army. It's like he broke the arm of the army. He didn't literally break Pharaoh's arm. And uh, it's kind of hard to wield a sword when you have a broken arm, you know? Son of man, I have broken the arm of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and lo, it shall not be bound up to be healed, to put a roller to bind it, to make it strong to hold the sword. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and will break his arms, the strong and that which was broken. And I will cause the sword to fall out of his hand. And I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and will disperse them through the countries. And I will strengthen the arms. I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon and put my sword in his hand. But I will break Pharaoh's arms and he shall groan before him with the groanings of a deadly wounded man. But I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon and the arms of Pharaoh shall fall down. And they shall know that I am the Lord when I shall put my sword into the hand of the king of Babylon and he will stretch it out upon the land of Egypt. And I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and disperse them among the countries and they shall know that I am the Lord. And I forgot my point with Kent Hovind, the uh, guy that's really good with uh, evolutionary stuff. Uh he went to prison for nine something years and uh, for basically uh, spending his own money. Yeah. Look up the, the law called structuring, you know, like structure, structuring. Uh, they say if you put money in the bank under uh, over $10,000 that, uh, you, they, a bank has to report it to the government. But if you put money under $10,000, then you're trying to avoid the law to have the money reported. And that's also breaking the law. So if you're putting money in the bank, technically it's against the law. And we know who runs the banks, don't we? Yeah. Same people that run the government. So, yeah. Spending his own money was illegal or depositing his own money. So he went to, they, well, of course, the government lied and said he went to uh, prison for tax evasion. But uh, that's not true. You look up the court records, it's structuring. So, yeah. So if you made uh, two $5,000 deposits within, oh, I don't know, any amount of time, the government can charge you with structuring. Oh yeah, you try to avoid that $10,000. So if you put $500 a week in the bank for, I don't know, 20 weeks, 21 weeks, well, you're guilty of structuring. You can go to prison. But the good thing is about Kent going to prison was he had time to study the Bible on his own. And all that pre-trib rapture garbage that he had been taught in college, Bible college, he says, wait a minute, how can this be true? Bible clearly teaches Christ returns once at the end of the tribulation. So he went from being a pre-trib to post-trib. And that was one of the things I used to blast him on back before he went to prison. I said, how can a guy that knows that much about the Bible be pre-trib rapture guy? Well, he changed his tune. Praise the Lord. And I may not agree with him on every point, but I'll tell you what. Uh, when your kids are taught evolution, let them listen to Kent Hoven for a while. And they'll realize what a foolish, evil, devilish doctrine that is evolution that is so but yeah he figured it out pre-trib rapture a lie a lie from the pit of hell designed to make millions of people that go to church 
Well, you don't go to church. Christians are the church. But they go to a, um, I guess you could call it a government indoctrination center with the name church in it. So they could deceive them. You know, and every time somebody comes on my channel, they say, oh, Bob, you don't believe in the pre-trip rapture? And then they write me a paragraph. And they can only post one Bible verse. Well, one Bible verse isn't even enough. And there is not one clear Bible verse that says the resurrection happens before the tribulation. Not even one. But the thing is, the Bible says, in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall everything be established. That's why you had Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Two witnesses for Jesus Christ. There is no... There is not two Bible verses, clear Bible verses, proving the resurrection happens before the tribulation. Proving the church won't be here. It's all their opinion. They never, never, never post any proof because there isn't any. And I'll tell you what, all these... People that think, oh, their pastors are just so great. Read what the Bible says about the punishment of false prophets. It's harsh, people. It's harsh. And I'll tell you what, a little bit of money in this world is not worth me lying to you to uh, be a false prophet. Uh, uh I'm probably not right on everything, but I don't I don't teach lies to to make money. And let me tell you something. If I'm doing this to make money, I'm doing a very 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 poor job. So, yeah. So what can I tell you? So, all right, people. All blessings, praise. Glory and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.